السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته سيدي وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته سيدي I want to share with my family the haqaiqs but scared they'd reject it in a bad way as they follow mainstream self-proclaimed shaykhs on YouTube. Yeah we don't have to share with anyone, first try to meditate and reach the reality before people block you. That's the problem we have many times said that you, you start sharing things you don't really understand and you really didn't make a strong connection, what happens? They attack you night and day until you are convinced it's wrong and you run. So that's not the system. The system is to become so strong in it, so deep in the tafakkur that you're anchored and you're not going anywhere. At that time if permitted then you start to dispense some realities here and there with a hikmah. But imagine you're barely clinging on and then your entire family have ulamas and scholars and uh, Wahhabi scholars and then they bring the imam from the mosque and oh my god they, they come from every direction and confuse people and then people run away. So it's like, go, it's like going for umrah, you know you, you start doing like you know Sufi practices in the middle of your umrah you're going to get all of their mukhabarat and all their people coming left and right and that's not the time to do that. So the practices have to be strong independently, make your connection alhamdulillah and send the links and the articles out to people, this is a shaykh, this is a shaykh. Then they curse and they yell, they, they every horrible thing and say, my gosh they need it even more, why would somebody hear reality? and begin to curse at the person. That's always baffling to the mind. If I send a person a flower and a rose and they take it and beat you on the head with the rose and destroy it, there's something mentally wrong with that person. So when these are Muhammadan realities, these are like fragrant roses of paradise. Anyone who should receive something like from those realities, chat groups, Telegram groups, WhatsApp groups, these are haqqaiqs. People should be welcoming the reality or very politely say, we follow a different shaykh and thank you and thank Shaykh Nurjan very much and have good manners, that's it. Because you have to have a respect, this is a Muhammadan rose coming to you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, this is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ignorant from the heart of Prophet Then imagine you take that and now you're stepping on it, smashing it, throwing it and all the heavens is watching like what was that about? And then Allah pointing out to you, see these are dogs, these are wild dogs. They're not insan, they're not, they're not even human and they're definitely not the people of Maqam al-Ihsan because this is a, a fragrant reality oiled and perfumed from the heart of Prophet You take it, you kiss it. You know if Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim falls on the floor you have a card or a letter or something says Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and it falls on the floor, immediately have to pick it up and kiss it and put it aside because it's from Allah has the angels guarding and, and writing all over it. So it means these people like no mind and that's what's important to see. One so that you appreciate what you have, you know you, people don't appreciate what they have until you sit with the people who have not. You know you complain about your job go sit in unemployment line. So anyone who complains about their work you have to do opposites to understand your reality and your sickness. 
you complain a lot about work, go to the unemployment line. You see that it's like how it's overwhelmed with people and sit in the back and each of them don't have money, don't have groceries, don't have nothing. And then you think to yourself, how dare you complain Allah sending you a provision and you're not happy with it, then thank Allah and He sends more. Anyone who's, who's not appreciating their health, go sit in the emergency room of the hospital and see how one by one people are coming in with sicknesses and, and devastating sort of results and now they have cancer, now they have this, now they have that. And you don't appreciate your health until you sit with the people who have no health. So it's always the law of opposites. So what we're trying to gain in a reality is, is to appreciate this reality, be a supporter of this reality but many people don't support thinking maybe what's the big deal? Oh that you want to see the big deal is start to hang out with people who have no knowledge. You know post on their websites, go to see on their pages all these horrible images, inappropriate images and then they're teaching you Islam. Or they belligerent and angry people and say, oh, this, this is why Allah enrolled me to, to learn manners so that I don't ever act like this. Shaykhs giving out backbiting and ghaibah and slander, supposedly shaykhs. InshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Is jealousy a result of shaitan's waswas or one's own bad action, character, nafs or attack of negative energy? If a person never had jealousy but it enters him, what's the reason? Uh, I think everything, why would it be one or the other? Whatever it is of negative, you eat a lot of bad food, shaitans came into you. Of course you're gonna have anger and bad characteristics. You did inappropriate things, you lost the shield of protection and inner hasad that if you don't have what they have and all of a sudden you come and see the hasad and jealousy and envy and enmity or all very dangerous characteristics that people don't know they have. So if somebody going around and trying to pretend like a shaykh and two people listening to him and then all of a sudden come and see a big association, see all these charity works, see all these thousands of views, uh, they can become very angry. And so that's why a lot of the people online whom self-professed and think that they're something or know something, they can become very angered. And we said before the teaching itself makes many, many uh, so-called scholars angry. Because they listen to it, they under, they're wondering why they don't understand it, why they don't have that connection, why they're not receiving any illuminated understandings and as a result they can't give answers to the people that they know. So somebody from an association in their association may come and say, oh wow, oh, well, can you explain this more? Because the people come and think that it's common for everyone. That oh, all, all the shaykhs will know everything or all these alims will know everything, it doesn't mean anything like that. Allah gives to each servant what Allah wants to give and no two servants receive the same gift from Allah And that's why a lot of, lot of jealousy begins to happen. So it's, it's many characteristics that people have. This is again dealing with tariqah when you start putting our articles out, now in everybody's common day and life. You can imagine how much jealousy people have, your job, your car, your home, your family. So con combating jealousy is then the whole concept of the evil eye and being humble and talking soft because it's one thing to understand jealousy, try to defend yourself with your taweez, with your evil eye. At our houses we have the evil eye by the door. So people walk in and say, oh that's nice, yeah that was what it was supposed to do, it doesn't have a power. They say, so is this a shirk shaykh? This is ridiculous like childhood questions, like kindergarten questions. So no why would it have a competition with Allah It's the color blue that takes your eyes. As soon as you look at something, the nazar instead of going on the home and the people of the home, it went to the blue and maybe cracked it. And that's exactly what the color blue is supposed to do. So the jewelry in blue is firuz and turquoise, why? 
because any stone has its zikr and as a result the blue also catches the eyes of people. So when they look they send their nazar upon that. If you have a new home and inviting everybody to your home, break the flower pot at the door so people can say, ha 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 look it broken, broken because they're happy in your demise and not in your success. This is the, the reality of human nature. This is all tariqah teachings, you give sadaqah, do all of these spiritual practices, be patient and, and calm in the event that people say things. So you have to just, uh, it's an all around practice. But this also for when dealing with articles so that people you understand, so wow they were so aggressive against the shaykh, yes that's your learning for the day is that to understand look what you have and what others don't have in manners and teachings inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Do positions of power give people more power to cause damage through their nazar hasad? For example, people with large followings. Do they have nazar? Nazar hasad. Hasad. Yeah, everyone to their own level. If they have a, a, a following and, and they want everyone to listen to them. Then do they have a hasad? Again they have to review themselves, only each person knows themselves. Or if they don't have a large following and somebody else has a large following then they have hasad. Or they put a book out on realities and the other one doesn't know that reality then they have hasad. So in, in spiritual ways is many, many different reasons why. But the importance is that it should have been checked and worked on in which to not have hasad and that everybody use their spiritual connection and connect. And then that becomes the beatific garden. So for students and people of the way when they make their connection the reality is that it should be like a garden. So anyone who goes in a garden they take some of the roses from here, some of the roses from there, some of the roses from here and they made a bouquet. So they, they used to ulama and awliya would sit together and they would give knowledges and realities and no two were the same. So they would be enlightened from one level of teaching and another person would have a completely different understanding in atoms, one would have an understanding in medicine. And it was like collecting roses and flowers and it becomes a bouquet of the Muhammadan garden. But now it become like, no we're the only garden and let's smash this, this other garden as it doesn't exist. And we only have this one garden on earth that everybody should uh, come pay homage to. And that's not the system, Allah has 124,000 of these realities and uh, alhamdulillah they're dressed by imams, they're dressed by the sahabi, they're dressed by the Muhammadan art. So each of their gardens have an immense reality. Only the humble can take from them and understand and, and, and digest and absorb its realities. And these become the realities of the Muhammadan heart, all the fragrances. Now there's so much envy, en envy and enmity with bad character, why, why, why? And then they get angered and, and, and the, the character of the, the crows that are around shaykhs that if the, if the students are not being trained in tafakkur, not being trained in how to meditate, what happens? You have a bunch of angry people continuously feeding angry information and then again making the ulama, the shaykhs to, to be agitated. And this is again because of the lack of training, lack of good manners, lack, lack of all of the, the practices inshaAllah. And that's why it's so important to do the muraqabah and the practices what we talked about tonight. Make the connection, make the fight against evilness and badness so that we, we're not a people like that and that our students shouldn't be like that. And I've never heard from anyone enter into one of our groups and chats and we have tens of thousands on different pages and all our moderators nobody's fighting with anyone, cursing anyone. They send us from uh, the ulama of Hind and uh, of Pakistan all the time 
and they respectfully decline and say, thank you very much, we're only sending the, sh the shaykh's teachings here. Nobody's uh, acting like a wild uh, beast that just came out of the zoo, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa If It feels like you are talking to each individual. When a test is spoken about, are we supposed to interpret it as a test specific for us, different for all? Thank you. All of the above is the correct answer. Could be about specific situations, could be about our situation and could be about your situation because Allah knows this is the month of testing. So the one whom sending this talk is also sending the ones whom are going to listen, it's all from one source. So the one whom gives the test says, go listen tonight at this place and as soon as he speaks I'm going to send you the information. So this all-powerful and Almighty put the test for everybody, put the condition for everybody, now go sit and get the remedy for everybody including ourselves, we're, we're the number one student, we're taking the information and the guidance for ourselves. We're continuously a student on the path and as a result we, we teach from what we understood and what we practice and how we were trained inshaAllah. And the, to be a continuous seeker on the path in which anywhere I go it's a learning opportunity for me and continuously amazed. So this is the, the miracle of this, this creation in which Allah wants to send and find the miracle within everyone. You know the miracle within everyone we have uh, our own. When that little boy sings and he sings Farsi more perfect than I can speak Farsi but he doesn't know Farsi. So means that's a miracle, you have to be humble to see that miracle. And our lives are continuously surrounded by people with miraculous hearts, miraculous love, miraculous uh, gifts and only the seeker can seek it out. But you know if you think you're the sought after then that's something different, that you don't see the miracle in anything, everything just sort of dirty and bad to you. So that, that's a different character, that's not the, the tariqah way, at least not the way that we were trained, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Dear Sayyidi Walaikum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, sins are too much, I feel like my body is my enemy and I'm trapped. Elevator goes down a lot, can I change environment or Allah wants us in this environment? We don't change a condition of a people until the change was within yourself. Unfortunately a new environment in most cases you pack the yourself in the bag. So here you go, you're now in this new place, it's still you. So you're gonna still make those choices, you're gonna still find those people to hang out with, you're going to still uh, click on your phone, you're gonna do all the things that you do. So you, you can't get rid of you. So in most places wherever Allah has you, you learn then to isolate. First isolate yourself, spend time to your muraqabah, make your connection, try to clean, try to purify. Then you can start to identify that maybe, you know, I, I shouldn't go to this place, unholy friends, I shouldn't be sitting in these unholy locations. But before I pick up and move my entire location I have to first attack each issue. So there are many times people come into tariqah and they, they still hang out with all of the bad friends thinking it's okay, why is okay? Well, wh why don't you change your fellowship of good people? Say, but I can't find any good people, then sit by yourself. So they get in the habit of dirty people, leave them to be with dirty people and you try to find people who want to improve themselves as your fellowship, spiritual people, people who want to be clean. And if you don't find then by yourself with your loved one and family. And then you begin to learn how to cut everything out so that if in a later time you need to move somewhere 
you have all of the characteristics that are appropriate and you'll choose the right place to move. You'll think of, oh I want somewhere more spiritual, some, somewhere more green, somewhere more isolated but now you don't see that. So you'll just pick the same type of environment in a different location. Busy areas, lots of clubs, lots of people, lots of this, lots of problems and you just pick up yourself into another condition that's similar. That's why Allah says, first we change ourselves so that I learn how to mature and how to cut everything off. Now with a clear mind and clear objective I know now how to choose where I want to move. I want to move where there's less people, I want to move where there's clean environment, woods, greens, bushes, things that are holy, anything. But when the person's not of a clear understanding they just keep choosing problem areas and then they change one problem for another problem, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam If we feel an immense hasad from someone that we have been avoiding, is it best to face that person by speaking to them or to just avoid running? No, avoid people with lots of hasad. You, you go into places and things break because of them. So these are very bad energy people, their eyes are very hungry, character very bad. They walk into environment, things break, smash and fall apart. So not, yeah, you don't need any spiritual combat. Try to find people whom their hearts are good and that their, their intentions are good. And then you begin to understand now the condition of a people, that I need to be in the fellowship of good people. And I do through the zikr and through the energy of the zikr and, and you know, you learn to talk less because you don't know who you're talking to and if they're very jealous of you. A lot of people think that they go to work and they have a, a, a family at work was a horrible understanding because there's no family at work and that's completely against Islamic understanding. Your family is the only family you have, everybody else at work is just people who you work with. And most likely they're, they're not on a spiritual path and they're spiritually all over the place and schizophrenic means that they're not really doing spiritual practices. So they have a lot of bad energies, a lot of uh, bad desires, a lot of bad characteristics and you don't want to take on those and you don't want to take those bad things home to your family, your children, to an environment that you've sanctified as your sanctuary. So again you learn how to keep a distance, keep your wudu, try to now talk less with the people and smile and you know they say, oh this person is you know just more into themselves and that's correct. I'm here to get a paycheck and go home, I'm not here to hang with everybody and to, to be buddy buddies with everybody and every five minutes say happy birthday in the cafeteria. No I don't want anything to do with people, I just get my paycheck, smile, show good characteristic and go home. But if you take on all of these gossips, all these backbiting, sit in the, in the cafeteria area, backbite, backbite, all of these sicknesses make people sick at home. And the children are the first ones to become sick because they're the youthful innocence like sponge. So many, many conditions people have to change before things change around them. So they have these uh, emails coming in, oh Shaykh I'm doing all these things, nothing changing but they don't tell you this subject that they go to work and they keep socializing at work and inappropriate socializing, inappropriate backbiting, listening to every type of gossip and garbage. So there's many, many issues in what affects people but the one whom really meditates they can find these sicknesses because they're meditating and thinking, oh my god I'm thinking about all, all the gossip they were saying at lunchtime at the office. Then you, you identify now a big source of the problems of where this ghaibah is coming. So then people who meditate usually find these problems and the things they watch, the shows they watch, the, the people they hang around. So all, all of them are part of the contagion, you know that's what we keep trying to teach. When, when somebody becomes sickened, let's say you know you're living in an environment with this COVID, somebody all of a sudden gets like, the, to, like a plague or a horrible sickness, you wouldn't invite them into your house, you wouldn't bring them all around. So you have to isolate people whom are not well 
The same thing with somebody emailing you horrific things and backbiting your shaykh, saying awful things to you about your shaykh, your tariqah, your way. Why would you even give two seconds of your ear to that? Because now the one who spoke and the one who heard are in the same sin and you keep doing it, engaging and playing with you, you can change them. Who are you to change anyone? You're but a student, you're not, you're not even a shaykh, you can't change anyone. As soon as somebody is off that means they have now the plague. Have you ever seen the, these videos of like a raccoon that has uh, rabies? They call him like rabbit, the, this guy's walking down the street all of a sudden the raccoon runs and grabs the person biting. No matter what they do they can't get the raccoon off. You throw it off it runs to the next person because they have now the rabbit, they, they have uh, rabies, they got some sort of a sickness, they're foaming from the mouth and attacking everyone. This is a person who is lost, as soon as they become lost, they become mentally not well, they start to attack and shaitan is, is very active through them, immediately learn how to cut things off and block everything because uh, this is a rabid animal and it's going to bite you and bite everything in your home if you let it in. So you learn in life, 35 years we're doing this now, 30, 30 something years we're doing this. So we're not here from yesterday and in our lives we know spirituality when somebody becomes sick you gotta block it. When people are you know all sorts of bad gossips and bad characteristics you gotta block it and keep it away because there's a shaitan in that person trying to come through and nobody is qualified to deal with shaitan. That's why Allah says, A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitanir Rajeem, seek refuge in Allah. Don't ever think you're somebody that can combat shaitan, InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Ya Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Was it jealousy that Iblis found out the reality of the Muhammadan light within Adam alayhi salam when Allah told angels to bow down? Sorry for bad adab. Yes, we have that in the article. Definitely it was a sign of jealousy he, and he was a worshipper that he thought he reached the highest levels of worshipness. And that's the danger of pride and jealousy. That's the first example that all the Prophets taught was about uh, Iblis and shaitan. They started as worshipping and worshipped everywhere that by one hand span is not a place you can find that he didn't make sujood for Allah But worshipping and but having bad character, teaching the angels but teaching the angels from his bad character until those angels were in danger of falling with him then Allah gave one command, bow down for Adam. I've taught him all the knowledges, he started to show the knowledges not his title, he showed his knowledges. When Allah said, I, I, I taught him all the knowledges means a Muhammadan light, this is a haqqaiq, went into Sayyidina Adam salam and immediately the knowledges of that station began to come out. As respect for that knowledge Allah ordered the angels, make sujood al ihtiram They went into sujood and shaitan stood there. One astonished by the Muhammadan light that he has knowledges he didn't have and became angered. Well, I'm going to make sujood for, for, for this creation. And the angels looked up and saw he's still standing. They got very frightened that bad punishment going to come now. They went back into sujood and that's why we make two prostrations in our salah in each rakah. So yeah, this was the core of, of arrogance and pride. So this is the, the reason why today is the same shaitan plays with people. That why are you not just happy with what Allah gave to you and uh, see the miracle in, in other people and be uh, participate in that miracle but they're more angered. That you didn't come to hear me, you, you, you don't, we don't have anybody hearing us. <laughs> so this is bad character, yeah.
inshallah. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. What's the reality behind the right eye twitching? Does it have any spiritual meaning? I would imagine that it has an energy trying to come onto your eyes. So the energy in the eye will twitch, right eye could twitch, left eye can twitch and then anytime we deal with energy practices then you know this, the body system is going to twitch or, or, or cramp and have you know different cold and hot, it's just a part of the practices. We don't have to seek information on everything, why my left foot hurts, why my toe hurts, why my finger hurts, why my thumb hurts, just take it and keep going. Sometimes things will hurt, sometimes things will be cold, sometimes things will be hot, sometimes things will be aggressive, sometimes things will be beautific. You take the good, the bad and the ugly and that's the package. And don't worry about anything, put your trust and faith in Allah so that not to be specific because then you become frightened of everything, what was that, what was this? Well, some, I felt like something touched me and then they scream, run and leave the meditation. Just sit there, the good, the bad and the ugly doesn't matter. If Allah meant for you to now die in this meditation, you say, okay, I'm going to die in this meditation. Allah meant for something to attack you in the meditation, not something going to attack you in the meditation. But this is your tawakkul, you're supposed to believe and put your faith and trust in Allah overcome your fear, face your fate and then you build your connection and your madad and everything. And so nothing can come to me except by Allah's permission and you live and, and die by that and you rely upon that. But it's easier said than done so that's why they begin to allow these types of practices in the meditation. Somebody will sit and meditate, all of a sudden they feel something just touch them, they scream, they yell and run out. So what was the tawakkul then? You thought the Allah wasn't real, the unseen isn't real? Did you think Allah maybe forgot and something was going to come in the room and kill you mysteriously? No. So but you're feeling that, you maybe think that, so it's, it's important to overcome that and that you sit in there, don't pay attention. It's not anything for you, don't worry about it. Make even more madda to the shaykh until it becomes more clear to you and you can control your mind's thought process. It's a whole system of tafakkur and contemplation inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasipoon wa salaam na mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa basiri Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.